rubber game with a Padres and Dodgers three-game series. Dodgers won two of three from San Diego last weekend. Greg Maddox turns 42 on Monday. Khalil Green, what a great diving play. Robbie and Russell Martin's off to a tough start. So is Andrew Jones. House four for 27 so far. One extra base hit. Don't forget, hit 222 last year. Maddox, a one-year, $10 million contract. Looks like a good investment. Five innings, two hits, two Ks, no runs. Trevor Hoffman, Russell Martin again. Martin, 0 for 4, hit 146. So uh, Maddox gets his career win 349. Hoffman career save 528. Talk about a Hall of Fame game. Padres win 1-0. Nats nine game losing streak ends thanks in part to Tom Glavin's beginning. Seeking his first win with the Braves since 02. Glavin fa fails to record an out just the second time in 672 starts over his 19 year career. That's happened. Five batters, 16 pitches in. Glavin out with a strained hammy. Nats up 5 0. Now it's 5 3. Mark Kotze, Willie Mopena, club in vain. His season debut. Jeff Rancour scores from first. It's a 5 4 game. Ninth inning. Chad Cordero, his first time we've seen him this season. Two out, one on. Chipper Jones doubles to right off Cordero, and we got runners on second and third. Intentional walk to load the bases. Manny Actis says, give me John Roush. I want somebody tall. Shut it down! One pitch save. Gets Brian McCann right there, and it's the Nats. 5-4, your final. First place in the NL East Marlins, last place in the NL Central Astros. Bottom two, J.R. Tolls, the Astro catcher, waits and jacks. Second of the season for Tolls, Astros lead. Michael Bourne also homered for Houston, and that's good enough for Wandy Rodriguez. Talk about a yak fest. Look at that thing. Nice. First six strikeouts came on the yellow hammer. Top of the seventh. This time, uh, waiter, some mozzarella cheese, please. Second straight, real good start for the Magic Wandy. He has 19 Ks and two walks in his three starts. Before Sunday, no player in San Francisco Giants history had homered in his first two games. John Bowker's name into the record book. Just called up, and now he's second on the team in home runs and RBIs. That's off the cards. Joel Pinheiro. Bowker's former minor league teammate Tim Lincecum strikes out 11 in six innings. We go top nine. Rico Washington tying run at the plate, and Brian Wilson gets him. Giants 7-4. From one giant win to another, let's return to Augusta. Blue Jays Rangers, yes, that is B.J. Ryan. First appearance in almost a year since he had Tommy John surgery. Bottom of the tenth, he's the seventh Blue Jay pitcher. Man on third, nobody out. Gets David Murphy to ground out with the infield in. Then Milton Bradley pops up in foul territory. This is after a Marlin Bird triple. Then two outs. Oh, that might drop in, but here comes Alex Rios and B.J. Ryan. 11 pitches, nine strikes, and yes, a save as Toronto wins. What in the name of Doppler is going on in Cleveland? 38 degrees with a 28 degree wind chill at game time. The Tribe tries to avoid being swept by the A's. Cliff Lee said the weather didn't bother him, but he definitely wouldn't want to have been a hitter. Camille Brown, Bobby Crosby can second that. We go to bottom third, two outs, and it's ugly. Travis Hafner to center off Chad Godin, who hit a guy, walked a guy, and then Chris Norfia can't make the catch, so the guy he hit and the guy he walked, Jamie Carroll and Grady Sizemore, they score. It's 2-0. Lee cruising. Gets Bobby Crosby swinging. Donnie Murphy, ditto. Both his wins have come against Oakland. He goes eight, two hits, no walks, eight Ks. Hey, kid, you spell pneumonia with a P or an N? This is from Sunday. We begin at Fenway, Yankees, Red Sox, Alberto Gonzalez, Flair, Julio Lugo. Still going, nice Basket catch over the shoulder. just ran it down. For the Fenway faithful. Number nine, excuse my bellicosity, pow! Oh. Corey Sarich on Patrick Marlowe. When you play hockey, Neil, don't have your head down, or that happens. <laughs> I gotta learn to skate oh, first. My <laughs> nose! Tigers trying to learn how to win. They're in Chicago. Paul Canerco says to Kenny Rogers, how's it? Zach Miner replaced Rogers, and Joe Creedy gives him a big what for. Only the third time the Sox have hit two grannies in a game. First time since 96, they win. MLS, Toronto, LA. Beckham to land in Donovan, who thinks he has a goal, but Greg Sutton says she'll get nothing and like it. Toronto's a winner, 3 2. Angels, Mariners in the Great Northwest. Miguel Cairo, liner to center. Gary Matthews Jr., when glove comes to town, he gets the top play, and the Angels get the 10 5 win. Number five, English Premier League. 
Man you, man up. And Wilkie Hargreaves. Brilliant. Stunning free kick from Owen Hargreaves. And it may well be the goal which puts Arsenal out of the title race once and for all. It is indeed Man U wins. At number four, Devils Rangers, New Jersey, New York, Martin Brodeur. Stone Blue, rock and roll, help me through. Ask Ryan Callahan, Brodeur, with 27 saves. Number three, huh? living well is the best revenge. But Mike Mills is to REM. Jose Bautista is to the Buckeyes. Check out that 5-4-3. And the Pirates win 9-1. to one. The best ballpark in baseball. At number two, final round of the Masters, Nick Watney, approach shot on 14, 115 yards out. Just like the Duncan Yo-Yo guy did. <laughs> Bring it right back to me. The Eagle. Trevor Emmelman, you may have got the green jacket, but Nick Watney got the top play. Oh, talk about the passion. There's nothing like overtime winning Stanley Cup playoff goals. John Matt, boom. Oh, Turduck is in off of Mark Stahl's blade. Devils were down 2 love. Now they're down 2-1. Bruins also have to win, and they win in overtime. Mark Savard gets the winner on the incredible pass from Dennis Weidman. Bruins still down. That's chicken skin. Your American League East leading Baltimore Orioles. Let me say that again. Your American League East leading Baltimore Orioles, but they met Jeff Neiman, fourth overall pick in the 04 amateur draft, getting Nick Markakis there. The Rays get six in the fifth. B.J. Upton, his bat speed is better than your bat speed. Ask Brian Burris. The Rays up 6-1. Neiman against Adam Jones, who struck out four times. He goes six innings, six hits, five Ks, one walk, and that's my boy right there. Rockies, Diamondbacks, pitcher Doug Davis back in the Diamondback dugout after a thyroid cancer surgery. Had his thyroid removed. who will have to take hormones for the rest of his life, but he could be pitching in about a month, month and a half for Arizona. Great news. Top of the first, Colorado off to a great start. Clint Barnes, two-run Jackson to left, first of the year. And the Rockies out on top. Now, bottom of the inning, kids know first and second, less than two outs, a pop-up. That's infield fly rule. The batter is automatically out. Sam Holbrook screams. Batter is out. That means there's no force. The runners don't have to run, of course. There's no force out at second. Clint Barmas thinks it's force out. More importantly, Orlando Hudson thinks it's a force out. It's not a force out. Now you're out. We're coming off the base. Top of the eighth, more Rocky power. Garrett Atkins, first of the year, had 29 last year. Matt Holliday also homeward for Colorado. And they cool down the red-hot D-backs 13-5. You don't have to be a Twins fan to remember how good this kid was a couple seasons ago. Francisco Liriano making his first major league appearance since 06. Elbow ligament replacement surgery cost him all of last season. His rookie year in 06, an all-star with a 12-3 record, an ERA at 216. He's going up against Brian Bannister, who's beaten the Tigers and Yankees so far. How would the Royals welcome Liriano to Kansas City? Well, Twins gave him a one-zip lead in the top of the first. Liriano going to give it back in the bottom of the frame. Billy Butler, base hit. Joey Gathright scores. Liriano admitted he had a case of the nerves going early in this one. Bottom four, 3-1 Royals. Two on, two out. Esteban Herman base hit. Delman Young's throw, not straight. John Buck, safe. Liriano, four and two-thirds, six hits, four and five walks, four Ks, 90 pitches, 51 strikes. Bannister said he wanted to work fast to try and tire Liriano out. Here he gets Mike Redmond to ground into the double play. Bannister, nine innings, three hits, nothing earned. The Royals win 5-1. Steve Phillips on Liriano's return to the bigs. <laughs> this is the thing about the Yankees Red Sox that if you're not familiar with it, if you're on the West Coast, you wonder why you see it all the time. Well, it's because of guys like that. And guys like this, Phil Hughes, he's from California, but he grew up a Red Sox fan there. His parents were from Rhode Island. He remembered his first game. Vaughn, no more hit home runs. I thought it was really cool when I was young, but now, now that I'm in this clubhouse, it's different. You bet it is. Manny Ramirez, bottom one, takes Hughes' curve into right center. Base hit, drives in Jacoby Ellsbury, who walks, stole second, went to third on an error. It's 1-0. Now 2-0. Two, two Euclid would drive home Drew, who was also walked in Hughes. Crosses up the pit, uh, the catcher, Jose Molina. Manny scores from third. It's 3-0 after one. We go third inning, bottom 4-1. Sean Casey singles off Hughes. Manny scores. It's 5-1. That chases Hughes. Two innings, career low. Seven runs, career high. Six earned, six hit, three walks, three Ks. They left nine on base, the Yankees did, including two on right here in a 7-5 game in the eighth. Johnny Damon. Grounds into the double play. The Red Sox, 8-5. Sean Casey with Peter Gammons afterwards. 
Sean, you've just experienced your first weekend yeah. Red Sox and Yankees. How do you describe it? Crazy. I'm passionate, man. You know, passionate. These Boston fans are so passionate, and uh, it's exciting. I mean, they're in every pitch. It's almost like a playoff game. Every game is a playoff game for them. Manny Ramirez, get her done, versus the Yankees this weekend. He goes four for ten in the series, four RBI, four runs scored. That's more than the Yankees' three, four, five hitters had in the series. Angels and Airwaves and Mariners, one of these two will likely win the AL West. All of these games matter as well. Vlad against Chow Sung Beck, top of the third scoreless. Mariners decide not to intentionally walk. Vladimir Guerrero with first base open. It's early, top of the third, scrollless game, but you, know, you, you can't pitch around Vlad. You can try, and you can pitch around him all you want, but the only chance you have is to pitch him underground, because if it's line above line ground, right he will reach it, and he will hit it. Angels take a 2-0 lead. They would get 16 hits in this game, and I tell you, their catchers are hitting this year. Mike Napoli, he, he was resting. He has three home runs this year, and that's Jeff Mathis. He has two. Five home runs for Angel catchers. Angels win big over Seattle, 10-5. See your Angels Mariners going to raise your Tigers White Sox. This one in Chicago. Kenny Rogers has lost both his starts this season. Detroit has yet to score a run in either game he's pitched. Bottom three, bases loaded for Paul Canerco. It's Sunday, and he's got the Holy Ghost power. Grand slam. White Sox up 5-0. Canerco, seventh slam of his career, first since the 4 season. Bottom five still 5-0 no outs runner at second Jim Tomey at the bat high pop to third Miguel Cabrera misremembers how to play it runs into the third base umpire Doug Eddings a microcosm of the Tigers season thus far Rogers gone four innings seven hits seven earned four walks Zach Miner comes in bases loaded later in the fifth Joe Creedy batting 341 four home run 15 RBI he goes granny the White Sox win 11 nothing Javier Vasquez seven innings nine K's in the W afterwards skipper Jim Leland said quote we're just in a funk can I get them out of the funk no I don't think so they have to get themselves out of it Tigers trying to get out of the basement of virtually every statistical category. Johnny Cueto takes them out in Pittsburgh for his third Major League start. He has struck out 18 batters combined and has yet to issue a walk. Bottom two. Don't! Ryan, don't hit. Clean up hitting catcher. That's gone. First hit allowed to a left-hander this season for Cueto. one nothing Buccos. Johnny Cueto's control, normally good. First walk allowed. Nate McLeod, what a year for McLeod. His OBP around 500. Next batter, Luis Rivas. He rakes one down the line. Pirates up 2-0. Bottom of the six is 3-0. Bucko Xavier Nady. The lumber company is back. Cueto, six innings, five hits, five earned. That one walk and six strikeouts. Fourth home run he's given up this year. Tom Gorzolani pitches well for the Pirates, and they win 9-1. Chase Stadium, the Mets, 14 hits, eight walks against the Brewers. How would it all add up? Oliver Perez, no runs allowed in 11 and two-thirds, so you got to figure advantage New York. Gabe Kapler, former Hawaii Winter Leaguer, former manager in the Red Sox organization, fourth homer in 23 at-bats this season, 2 nothing Brewers. Mets score the next six. We're now tied at six, leading off Ricky Weeks off Jorge Sosa, his third of the season. Brewers take a 9-7 lead into the eighth. Mets, runners at the corners, no outs. Bottom eight, Luis Castile, Prince Fielder. Brady Clark out at home. Fielder in a two for 24 slump, but the mine find there a mental mistake by Clark, according to manager Rudolph, or Randolph. The Brewers win 9-7. Doubleheader highlights. Phillies hosting the Cubs. Jamie Moyer broke in with Chicago in 1986. He was down 3-2 in the sixth when Mark DeRosa took him for a ride. Or was it the umpiring crew that got taken for a ride? Third base umpire Adrian Johnson calls it a home run. Charlie Manuel says, I don't think so. Tim Welke gets his group of umpires together. They say, yeah, it's a home run. Well, it's inaccurately called. And Manuel comes out, and he's going to get run. He says, my left fielder, Pat Burrell, said it was no good. And Moyer, no good for him. Five innings, nine hits, four runs. Top ten. Tied. One out. Two on via walks given up by Rudy Sanchez. And Carlos Zambrano, the Cubs are out of position players, so the pitcher batting 215. He hits, and Chase Utley throws away what should have been a double play ball, and Ronnie Cedeno scores, and Cubs win it 6-5. 16 wins shy of 300, looking to shave off one of those in San Francisco. The third leading strikeout pitcher trailing Roger Clemens by 56. Had some 
control issues. Walk Randy Wynn, Ray Durham. There he gets Rich Aurelia to get out of a jam without giving up a run. It was 3-3 in the third. Justin Upton, the single. Connor Jackson scores. And Arizona has a 4-3 lead for Randy Johnson. Bottom of the fifth. Here's Durham. Line drive to second. Orlando Hudson doubles off Aaron Rowan. Johnson out of another jam. Five innings, no earned runs. Seven strikeouts, four walks. Randy Wynn, ground ball to short, under the glove of Stephen Drew. Never assumed the double play, but you would have figured there would have been at least one out there. The runner goes all the way to third. Too bad his late runners in the corners. Benji Molina, sack fly to left. Randy Wynn would tag and score. And so the Giants up 5-4. Bottom of the eighth we go. Eugenio Velez, pop foul. Mark Reynolds, what an effort by Reynolds to dive into that pit over there. Can't come up with the play. Reynolds, you can see in his face in that metal railing, he was able to finish the game. The Giants hang on for a 5-4 win. Back to the big story, the big unit. Randy Johnson, certainly an encouraging first start. Now, he only threw 49 strikes of his 90 pitches, but he struck out seven, gave up four walks, three hits, those five innings pitched. Again, no earned runs, left with the lead, and was in position to pick up the win. John Cruck, the return of the big unit. Well, after their Masters disappointment, the Tigers opening a two-game series at home with Minnesota. Detroit 0 for 6 at home so far in 08. This isn't very good. Jason Kubel off Jeremy Bonderman to center field. Clay Thomas charges and charges too much. Overruns at Delman Young, scores 4-0 twins. They're up one with the bases Chuck. Justin Morneau drops a base hit into the left field. Carlos Gomez, Denard Spann scored 7-4 Minnesota. Bottom seven, Devon Rodriguez former driller. The right field off the glove of Span for the home run. Tigers down 9-5. Pudges first. Look at it again. That's in the webbing, but it just he did he got the web, he not the gem. Costly mistake. We roll on. Bottom 8. Tigers down 9-7. Pudge again. Two on. That's a gap. And they got big gaps there in Detroit. Miguel Cabrera, Edgar Renteria scored two run triple for Pudge. We're tied at 9. Next batter Jock Jones lines one to left. Young makes the catch. Rodriguez coming. Tigers with the lead for the first time. 10-9. Top nine. Twins down two. Two on, two out. Nick Punto shot deep to left. Ryan Rayburn is there. And the Tigers win their third game of the season. But they pound out 11 runs in this one. 11-9 over the Twins. The Tigers offense finally comes alive. They're being shut out four times in their first 12 games, including the last two. They're scoring five or more runs only twice. Detroit has hit 11 runs, including sixth in the eighth inning alone. Up next, the challenge trying to win two in a row for the first time all season. Everybody else has done that in the bigs, just not the Tigers. The Yankees left Tampa in spring training just a couple weeks ago. Back on Monday to face the Rays. Derek Jeter back after missing a week because they strained quad. Alex Rodriguez. Wow, Johnny Damon let off the game in the home run, but it didn't go this far. That is a no-doubter. 521st of his career. Times with Ted Williams, Willie McCovey for 15th on the all-time home run list. Yanks up 2-0. Bottom 7-7-2. Seven, seven, Ian Kennedy, look out! Right back at you. He's hip. Jason Bruntland, the guy who swung and drove it at him, but he gets it. Bruntland beats out infield single. Kennedy shaking up the play. Just never got the glove there. He's going to leave. Six innings pitched. Two runs, four Ks. In line for a win. But Yanks bring in lefty Billy Traber to face Carl Crawford with a man on, and that is two-run Jimmy Jack. His first of the year, Tampa cuts it to 7-4. Traber taken out, placed by Brian Bruni. B.J. Upton, oh, another crush job. Second straight game with a home run for Upton. Rays within one. Next guy, Evan Longoria. Give me a break. His first career home run ties it at seven. Certainly more to come from Longoria. Great prospect in the Rays organization. Top eight now. Robinson Cano scheduled OFF, right? He's pinch hitting for Alberto Gonzalez. And if you're going to come in on your day off, you better make it worthwhile. A lot of home runs in this ball game. That one off Al Reyes. First of the year for Cano on the Yanks. Back up 8-7. They hold on to win by the very same score. A closer look at A-Rod's 521 home run company. Nice threesome for sure. Rodriguez reaching his tie for 15th on the all-time list in fewer seasons than McCovey and four faster than the splendid splinter. 
He's also knocking the ball out of the park at a quicker per at bat race rate than those two. Next on the list, Jimmy Fox. Exactly narrow it down for us there, did you? Red Sox Indians, as far as we know, there is not a Mike Greenwell jersey hidden in the concrete of Jacobs Field. David Ortiz, three for 43 this season. There's a base knock. He's off the schneid in his first career hit off Jake Westbrook. Bottom five, two in Indians. John Lester facing Travis Hafner. Hey, Shrick. Casey Blake, Grady Sizemore will score. Good two-run single there. Indians take a 4-1 lead and just merely rolling along into the seventh. It's 4-2 Indians. Ortiz with a couple of guys on and Rafael Betancourt gets Big Poppy to go down swinging. Next guy in the lineup, Manny Ramirez. Uh, that one's good enough to look at. Indians keep the lead at 4-2. Back-to-back strikeouts of Ortiz and Ramirez. We go to the ninth, but now tied at four, so the cheese is a little more binding, and Ortiz facing Joe Borowski. That's a He's not exactly pulling it, but it, it, it's down, sure. Two for five on the day. Nearly matched his season total in Manny Ramirez. Oh, goodness. He wasn't looking this time. He was swinging hard a third of the year. Red Sox take the lead 6-4. They close it out thanks to Pavel Bond. 6-4. All right, first place showdown. The West Division's A's and the Central's White Sox. Yeah, you heard me right. First place showdown. And in the fourth inning, that shot goes to center. That'll be a play at the plate, and not all that close. In a 2-1 A's lead, now the pitching, and now the hitting. Watch Nick Swisher drive the ball deep right center. Chris D'Onofrio there to make the catch in front of the wall. Bottom nine, two on, two outs. Joe Creedy will tap it back to Houston Street. The A's win 2-1. First major league win for Greg Smith. Congratulations, kid. Angels Rangers Vlad Guerrero and his team will two games set with Tejas. Top second. We're tied at three. Vlad. Oh, he swings a nasty bat over Marlon Bird's glove, off the wall, RBI double. Gary Matthews Jr. will score 4-3 Angels, bottom three, down 5-3, went out, bases loaded. Marlon Gerard Bird getting out right now. 6-4-3, Rangers, A.L. Worst, buck 84 with runners in scoring position coming into Monday. That didn't help, and that's for sure. My serious Torres and Bird misplays that one. I don't know if we're picking on Burge, not me, but somebody doesn't like him. Guerrero, Casey Kochman coming to score 7-3 Angels, and the Halos give up one, but still win comfortably. And Orioles went into their contest tied for first place. Who would have thunk it? The expensive ALEs. It's Kevin Millar. Had himself a ball game. The Orioles were trailing 1-0. Millar with two on off. Dustin McGowan rips one to tie the game at one. It's McGowan against Millar again in the bottom of the fifth. Get out of town. Millar all over McGowan. Three RBIs in the game. The O's at a 3-1 lead. George Sherrill in relief facing Alex Rios. And it's Rios who does the crush job his first of the year. And the Orioles lead is cut back to one. Two batters later. Sherrill facing Greg Zahn. Zahn lines out to end it. The Orioles do hang on. Take over sole possession of first place in that expensive AL East. Pirates and Dodgers. Zach Duke and the Buckos coming off a sweep of the Reds. Bottom five, Dodgers down 2-1. The pitcher, Hiroki Karata, chops a, a double down the left field line. Andrew Jones will score. We're tied at two. Nice when the pitcher contributes a little bit. Bottom six, tied at three, one on two out. Blake DeWitt lines a single off the glove of Doug Mankiewicz. He usually snares those. James Loney will score. Duke, three earned in six innings pitch. Eight hits, you're done. We go to the ninth. Still 4-3. Kashi Saito on for the save. Two on, two out, and two out hits will get you to heaven. Nate McClough clouding a three-run home run. His second of the season. The Pirates take a 6-4 lead. We go to the home half of the ninth. Matt Caps gets the better of Matt Kemp. Clough, the hero, as the Pirates win their fourth in a row. 6-4, the Dodgers. Center's top play. Yes. Number 10, Fred. Arena football. Half the field, all the fun. Russ McNett connects with Travis Latendris for the game-winning touchdown. Chicago wins 49-42. Oh, I thought he was going to get to take a player home. That would have been really nice. I know you get the ball every once in a while, but here, take a receiver. At number nine, dancing with the stars, Jason Taylor and his partner, Edita Slavinsky, showing some nice moves on the dance floor. Taylor and Edita would receive nines from all three judges. That's a total of right around 27. Yeah, you read it like you know it. Number eight, Royals Mariners, Zach Greinke. Gets Raul Banez to ground out to short to end the contest. Greinke's third career complete game. The Royals win 5-1. Nice work by Ozak. 
At number seven, the Spurs and Kings, John Salvin. A little ball fake and then driving the baseline and the finish. Watch it again. Kings will lose the game. They do have a top play. Number six, Red Wings Predators. Detroit's Nicholas Cronwall just checks Roddick Bong. He just got bonked. Nash would rally to win 5-3. Detroit leads the series 2-1. He just got wiped out there, huh? Can you do that? That's legal, yeah. You can't do the face guard. No. You can just run a guy over like that? No. Doesn't seem fair either, I gotta be honest. <laughs> English Premier League soccer. Jason Kumis, the nice cross to Emil Heskey. And Wigan earns the one-all tie, hurting Chelsea's chances for a premiership title. Number four, back to the Royals Mariners, Unieski Betancourt. He thinks he's got a home run. Martinez says, no, you don't. The Royals going to improve to eight and five. Look at him go back. He's got it. Nicely done by Martinez. Yeah, I, I think that would have been a point for the other team if he had not caught that. Number three, Red Sox and Indians tied at four on the ninth, not for long. Joel Borowski said afterwards, got to get his arm checked, concerned with his velocity. Yeah, Manny Ramirez might agree. Red Sox pull off the ninth inning, come back and win 6-4. Ball appeared to be moving pretty good, actually, when it you know, left the parking lot. Look at Sixers, Kaz at number two, it's LeBron James. He's driving and throwing down. He finished with 27. Cleveland wins with two free throws with two tenths left in the game. Abs and Wild in the overtime series. Every game has gone overtime so far. Here, Pierre Marc Bouchard from Brian Ralston. The Wild in overtime. They lead 2-1 in the series.